Joining us now with the very latest, our Phil Lipoff. He's on the ground in Poland. ABC senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky, who is in Ukraine. Also with us, White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks. Okay, let's start with you, Aaron. Ukrainian leaders have basically downplayed this Russian threat for weeks, but it seems like that has shifted today specifically. It's the first time they've declared a state of emergency and actually called up reservists. So what does this state of emergency look like? Kira, there has been a significant shift in the posture of the Ukrainian government in just the last hours. That state of emergency that has been recommended by the Security Council that Parliament is expected to vote on sometime tonight would allow authorities to impose curfews, to restrict travel, and to take other measures, if needed, to deter any potential danger. The idea, according to Ukrainian officials, is not to, to sow panic. Indeed, just the opposite. They'd like to keep things calm, but they'd like to have some options if any threats arise. And taken with the call-up of reservists in a first wave of about 36,000 to support the active duty Ukrainian army, it doesn't quite put the country on a war footing, but it does creep them ever closer. So, Aaron, then Ukraine's military has also told par Parliament it's expecting a, a Russian attack in the next two days, possibly. So what exactly are they expecting? The Ukrainian military has braced parliamentarians for the possibility that the country could well be at war in fairly short order. It's not exactly clear what it's going to look like. As we heard President Zelensky say today, this isn't a weather forecast. You can't exactly predict. But he said Ukraine needs to be ready for anything. According to sources, the Ukrainian military told Parliament that they expect a large-scale invasion, possibly to include the feared attack against the capital, Kyiv, with Russian troops coming in from Belarus to the north. They also believe that it will include troops coming in from the east through those separatist areas that President Putin has already recognized as independent from Ukraine, and perhaps to include Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, which is also in the east. This is what the United States and its allies have been warning about now for several weeks, and the Ukrainian military has braced parliament that it could finally be coming to fruition. And Phil, the Ukrainian foreign minister today saying that he was grateful for the sanctions that have already been imposed. But what else is Ukraine looking for from Western countries now, from NATO in particular uh, also in the days ahead? Well, quite frankly, Kira, they're asking for help and they're getting a pretty strong global response. But the baseline, the Ukrainian foreign minister you're talking about, the baseline is he asked NATO just not to recognize the changes made in the breakaway region. That's just the baseline, the first thing. Then they're looking for strong sanctions. You'll remember the Ukrainian foreign minister, along with other leaders in Ukraine, asked for sanctions to be imposed before President Putin made his move into eastern Ukraine. That didn't happen, but now sanctions are coming uh, fast and from all over. Germany yesterday with the pipeline, today the European Union, slapped sanctions on 351 members of the Russian parliament that voted to ratify President Putin's decision to go in to eastern Ukraine in those separatist-backed areas. Uh, then there are sanctions on Russian banks and oligarchs. And the European Union also uh, put an import sanction and a partial export sanction there, uh, at least in that eastern Ukraine area, the, the Russian-backed uh, areas now that have been recognized by Russia. There are sanctions from the United States as well, but we understand that there are going to be stronger sanctions now from the U.S. The question, Kira, in all of this really is, are any of these sanctions, are all of them put together, going to do anything to stop President Putin from doing what he wants to do? So, Mary Alice, after yesterday's announcement from President Biden, when do we expect the next uh, tranche of sanctions from the U.S.? He's sort of waiting for President Putin to make his next move. We heard really strong words again from the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. just now. She said, this is 2022. We're not going back to an era of empires or colonies or the USSR or the Soviet Union. Russia will pay an even steeper price if it continues its aggression. So we are expecting President Biden to roll out, like Phil was saying, even stronger sanctions if Putin advances his troops. But of course, if the worst case scenario comes to pass, if we are actually seeing images of a full-scale invasion of, of a huge attack on major Ukrainian cities, well, I can imagine the world is going to be wondering what else the U.S. should have done besides just sanctions. 
Well, Mary Alice, we've also learned that Secretary of State Blinken will no longer be meeting with his Russian counterpart, uh, Sergei Lavrov, this week. We reported that yesterday. So is the window for a diplomatic off-ramp now completely closed? The White House says no. They want to make this clear. They're trying to say that there's always room for diplomacy, that their phone lines are open if Russia wants to choose that path. But you're right, right now they're not planning any of those meetings that they had talked about potentially for this week. They said that that just doesn't make sense for Secretary of State Blinken to meet with his Russian counterpart. And of course, this moment really reminding us that the Ukrainians have been put in such a box. You know, we're hearing about what Aaron was saying, the Ukrainians calling up the reservists. For so long, the United States has been really applauding Ukraine for, for not taking the bait, for not uh, firing back. But we're seeing Russia more and more sort of do everything they can to try to provoke Ukraine. It feels so hard to imagine a diplomatic path right now when Ukraine's doing everything they can to both stand firm with their territorial integrity, but not uh, start a war with Russia either. And finally, Aaron, we've been hearing reports of new cyber attacks hitting Ukraine. Uh, What's being impacted? What do you know at this point? It's another really worrying sign, Kira, because we had been told that cyber attacks would in all likelihood precede some kind of an invasion by Russian military forces. And indeed today, a number of Ukrainian government websites went down. Some of them came right back up, like the Ministry of Defense, but other ministries remain down as we speak, and, and they've not been able to, uh, to get them restored. We don't know how serious these cyber attacks, these denial of service attacks ultimately will prove to be, but because officials here had been concerned that they would precede a proper military invasion, it's yet one more worrying sign tonight. Okay, Aaron, Mary Alice, also Phil, thank you all so much for your insight. We'll keep the conversation going, of course. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.